now you take my son's pie. And to even that, you feel entitled. Exhausting, wasn't it? Hiding beneath the cloak of your own righteousness. But now they see you as you are. <laughs> Let's start with this 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 knife fight between Alice and Rhaenyra, 10 years in the making, if not more. Here's my read on this, and you tell me, tell me where I'm at, where I'm at with this. Yeah. Uh, I think that Allison sees her life as like this profound sacrifice for the sake of the realm, which is ironic, I guess, because in some ways Rhaenyra knows that her life is also a sacrifice for the sake of the realm, but for different reasons because of the secret that Viserys has given her. Mm -hmm. But Allison is kind of like, I have given away my individuality to the extent that, that she understood it at the time to become a queen and a mother and a wife. And this was because her father put her in the position to do that in, mm -hmm. in somewhat, you know, creepy ways. And that Viserys selected her in somewhat creepy ways. And that Westeros needed a queen after Emma died. And in Allison's view, Rhaenyra has basically led a life of following her fancy from Damon to Kristen to Laenor to Harwin to Damon again. And her children are Ill illegitimate and pose like a, a mortal threat to her own children. So in that sense, I can kind of get where, where the switchblade came out. Yeah. No, I think that's, um, that's a perfect read, I think. And her speech that she gives there, because we had heard that line, where is duty, where is sacrifice so many times in the trailer. But what she says before that, what have I done but what was expected of me forever upholding the kingdom, the family, the law, while well, you flout all and do what you please. I think that's what she said. I didn't have closed captionings. Uh, where is sacrifice? Where is duty? It's trampled under your pretty feet again. And I think we're going to talk about that knife in a second, but I think her saying where is duty and Rhaenyra can see her duty out of the corner of her eye in the shape yeah. of that knife, like reflected in the fireplace. Um there's just this wide gulf of a secret between these women. Like, Allison cannot know what has been weighing on Rhaenyra. We hear her unburden herself to Damon a bit when she talks about ever since she was made the heir, the pressure that she's felt, all of that. But Allison doesn't see that. Allison can't know the full breadth of it. Damon doesn't even know the full breadth of it, as far as we know. He doesn't know about the prophecy. And so... I was re-watching interviews that Emma Darcy and Olivia, Olivia Cook gave before the series started. And something they kept talking about was that these two women who loved each other desperately wanted to reconnect, but neither of them would be the first one to ever rebuild that bridge. And so I was trying to read that, even though I kind of felt like Rhaenyra did last week, but I was trying to read that out of that knife confrontation of like these women desperately want to connect, but there's so much in the way and there's so much space between them at this point that it feels almost possible. And there's all the all the men in the room also who, as you pointed out, Chris, have been responsible for driving yeah. this wedge between so, them. So this, Mal, I remember when we used to do Talk the Thrones about the original series and sometimes I would butt my head up against, occasionally, what was on screen versus what was obviously in a text of some kind. And I think... If I had an issue over the last couple of episodes, even though I've enjoyed myself and especially enjoyed Emma Darcy and Olivia Cook, it's like there's this 10-year time gap that we didn't get to see any of. Mm -hmm. And that Allison's anger at Rhaenyra is like, I, I think I intellectually understand it, but emotionally don't get it from watching the show sometimes, right? Like, I, mm -hmm. I think, and then this episode was the one where I was like, oh yeah, people have been telling her for probably a decade that one day Rhaenyra is going to kill her and her children. To solidify <laughs> I mean, her, her claim. Her the, dad definitely has yeah. been telling her that, yeah. S right. So that, and she's that, now telling her own kids that, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. and she's now like, kind of, I mean, I mean, she's paranoid. She might be right. She might be paranoid. But like, I, what, what did you make of that fight? And what did you make of their their conflict in general in this episode? Ooh, it's just <laughs> such a incredibly rich and uh, amazingly interesting scene. Every facial expression from every person in the room tells us something. I think that what Joe said is is exactly right and crucial. You know, Allison might as well be a member of House Tully here, espousing <laughs> family duty honor as these sacred principles. And I I think that the while you flout it all to do as you please line is maybe as central and crucial of a thing as we've heard from Allison across any of the seven episodes, because there are 
is this, and, and Rhaenyra throws this idea of this cloak of righteousness back mm. in Alicent's face, which I think was equally important, right? Like, now this they is, see you. Now yeah. they see you as you are. This is a moment of disillusion. Like, this is it. Even at the beginning of this hour of TV, when, the, when Rhaenyra and Damon are discussing what happened with the Strongs, Rhaenyra is saying, I do not believe Alicent is capable of murder. Later that day, Alison demands a child's eye. As retribution, it was impossible not to think back to one of our earliest, most intense Game of Thrones experiences, the showdown at the end of the crossroads with Cersei and King Robert and Ned and Joffrey and Arya and Sansa and Nymeria and Lady when Cersei said, and what of the direwolf? What of the beast that savaged your son? And then later we have another wolf. Like this thirst for justice and vengeance at all costs. But the thing that we needed from Alicent here was that humanity, that vulnerability. So when she says this this thing to Rhaenyra about how Rhaenyra gets to do whatever she wants, and Alicent is on the one hand espousing duty as this sacred, precious thing. It is at the heart of her crusade and her quest, maintaining it, nurturing it, bringing other people inside of her version of it. But it is also something that she deeply resents, that she has had to live her life inside of it. And so if you look at the conversation later, after the knife fight, between Allison and Otto, there's this incredibly strange mix of emotions and competing instincts, where on the one hand, he's almost looking at her for the first time as a true partner. Yeah. Yeah. But he's a play, also a player, sa- uh, right? A player, a player in, in the, the game. game. Yeah. But he's also still using her as a pawn. Now go to him, and she has been caught inside of this. And this again is why we needed those first five episodes to understand what Allison means when she's saying sacrifice, because otherwise, all there is is, is villainy. To hear more from this conversation, follow this podcast on the Ringerverse on Spotify or wherever you get your pods. <laughs> 